On our last Rise and Fall video, we went over some ducks that a lot of you thought were frogs for the show Breadwinners. Today, we are taking a look at another Nickelodeon show that features animals as main characters. This time, birds. And whatever these two are, I think they're imps? That's right, we're gonna go over Harvey Beaks, a show that you can classify as a chill hangout show first, with anything like action or over-the-top comedy second. As I've stated plenty of times before, I love vibes like this. It's a major reason why I enjoy Craig of the Creek. And while that show clearly has a little bit more action in comparison, it still brings out these exact feelings. What's interesting with Harvey Beaks, though, is that while I have heard people mention this show here and there, I overall didn't hear much about it aside from people saying that in fact they did watch it. Wow, that's so helpful. I wanted to, on my own, take a look at why the show feels so disconnected from the cartoon conversation, and look at how the show came to be and what reasons there are for its eventual disappearance. It looks like a fun, cute little show, and just like my channel, I make fun little cute content. Or we can all pretend I didn't say that and move on with the rest of the video. Okay, thanks. Just remember to have fun. <sighs> I really need a new wallet. Summer sale. Ow. What was that for? You needed a new wallet, right? Yeah. Summer sale. Exter, the world's largest smart wallet brand. Efficiency, security, and style are Exter's mission statement, and that's what you get. So I wanted to try the new Parliament AirTag wallet. It's just like the regular Parliament wallet I use. Only difference is it gives me another safety feature on top of already using the sleek tracker card that I have shown off in previous videos. But now I can add an AirTag that connects right to my phone that can directly pinpoint on my screen where my wallet is. The Parliament AirTag wallet has all the great same features as the Parliament wallet I have been using, it's comfortable, it's convenient, and boom, access to all of my cards without having to dig them out through all the holders from my previous old wallet. It's quick and the aluminum internal casing protects them against skimming, which plagues so many people per year, so the RFID protection is a pretty nice safety to have. Using the Parliament family of wallets for my everyday use has genuinely been a breeze and honestly, I won't ever have to worry about purchasing another wallet ever again. The wallet is also made with premium environment mentally friendly leather and fits nicely in my pocket that sometimes I forget it's there. Whew, it's there. But if it weren't, I'd still be able to find it thanks to the tracker or the AirTag. To step up your wallet game, click my link down below in the description and check out the summer sale for up to 25% off your purchase. Thanks so much to Exter for sponsoring today's video. This one is my favorite. Harvey Beaks follows the day-to-day -day life of Harvey, a kind young bird who struggles with his OCD and doing anything outside of his comfort. Along with his best friends, Fee and Foo, they all go on various adventures in Little Bark Grove and usually find themselves in some sort of shenanigans that can all be chalked up to harmless fun. Fee and Fu are twin siblings who are shown to have no home in the woods as they sleep in the trees at night and don't have their parents around, causing them to find family in Harvey and his family life at home with Harvey's mom and dad and this egg that's just an egg until later on in season one where the egg hatches and Harvey has a new little sister, Michelle. The series was created by C.H. Greenblatt a veteran in the animation space who has had his hand dipped into the ink of a bunch of classic shows, and part of the excitement for the show came from the fact of this being Greenblatt's creation. But with Harvey Beaks, it unfortunately has one of the more sadder stories of everything aligning properly, especially for what the audience was seeing, but behind the scenes, things began to get messy, especially as they started to pop up in the public eye, ultimately leading to the end of the show. C.H. Greenblatt works in a very unique way. For this series being the follow-up for Cartoon Network's Chowder for him, he went a route that would create something completely different in tone, one based more on charm and morale storytelling over anything first and foremost. One of the most commendable things he would do, and something I personally think is really cool, is how he would bring artists and team members onto the production just from keeping a list of names of those he found on Tumblr and was blown away by. Tumblr, oddly enough, will play a larger role in this show later on as well. The original concept for Harvey Beak started back in 2009 and 2010, at first being titled The Terrible Three, and later becoming Bad Seeds, in which would be the full-pitched idea to Nickelodeon as an 11-minute segment. Out of the three main characters, the idea was originally to have Fu be the central character, causing the story and plot points to be more chaotic or Chowder-esque in some ways. But after coming up with a side character that Greenblatt himself related more to that would be an opposite balance for Fu, 
the character of Harvey was fully realized and became the central character of the story. As far as watching the pilot, it was released online, but for some reason has become more scarce to this day. It's always cool to see where a concept forms from to what it fully becomes afterwards. Funny enough, the show would probably still be called Bad Seeds if it weren't for a trademark issue, and before the show would premiere in 2015, Greenblatt announced the new title as Harvey Beaks. Once the show did premiere, it was the clear outlier within the other shows on the network. It wasn't focused on slapstick or gross-out humor in any way. It instead hit the viewer with a lot of heart, some well-told morals, and an easy jump-in point for any new viewer since fighting for broadcast time was next to impossible. Most times, if you weren't there for the premiere of a new episode, you most likely would just full-on miss it as reruns in general were near to non-existent. The show dealt with a lot of themes that can effectively hit harder more than most. For example, how the show deals with the death of a character and how this death affects certain other characters. Even in the end, the finale is a full 22-minute segment titled The End and the Beginning, regarding Fi and Fu's parents, life changes, and dealing with saying goodbye, but goodbye not meaning forever. It ends as strong as the vast majority of the show was. It wore its heart and emotions on its sleeve. It also had this random chowder cameo. But overall, the show was great at storytelling through relatable simplicity. Unfortunately, a good, well-written, and well-received show can't save your time on the air. I gotta go think about this. Harvey Beaks is up next. November 6th, 2016. The sad part is we all felt like the show could have done well if it had been given a chance. But here's the thing. Nick will have aired Harvey Beak barely over 15 hours total for all of 2016. They run a lot more than 15 hours of Spongebob a week and expect us to compete with a global phenomenon show 18 years old. Honestly, if I ran a network that way, I would be ashamed and disgusted with myself. That was the response given from Greenblatt to a fan on his his Tumblr sharing their sadness in the way Harvey Beaks was being treated by the network. It's not often a look in between the cracks of the business side are poured out, so this felt more personal in an emotional response sense than anything in a malicious sense. This was but one initial response of many from Greenblatt that has since been deleted. Before any of these responses to fans in 2016 that told a more sad tale, we need to see what directly triggered this peak into madness. In 2015, the show's first year on the air suddenly was taken off schedule, confusing fans leading to speculations of it being due to the show's ratings, which for this early on in a show's life were fairly decent in comparison of other shows on the network. Shane Houghton wrote on his Tumblr, sorry the channel has been moving stuff around so much. Continuing on to say, we on the crew are just as frustrated as you guys. Greenblatt jumped in as well stating, everyone remain calm, we're not off the air, and it's not just us getting this treatment. They stopped all premieres, animation and live action, except Pig, Goat, Banana, Cricket for the summer. Hopefully they'll rerun the show so folks can become more aware of it in the meantime. We should be back with a big push come late summer, early fall. We're not thrilled about this, but we're still making episodes full steam ahead and I promise they will get out there eventually. Nickelodeon, aside from any contractual related reasons, wouldn't be happy with one of their show's creators for the network publicly bad -mouth the way in which the company is run. But the thing was, this was all pretty mild, especially in comparison of what would come later. His comments here were more of concern for the fans rather than an attack on the network. But that didn't stop the animation space in general taking this story and every other story in and claiming Nick is not a place to take your ideas to. They are not creator friendly, nor do they respect them. Somehow, this would all land on Greenblatt's shoulders as an easy scapegoat and a response from him was released. On the surface, an apology from Greenblatt was issued in the comments on the article that Cartoon Brew had written that was criticizing Nickelodeon. Hey guys, this is Carl. I think we need to set a few things straight. To say Nickelodeon doesn't respect their creators is a big disservice to the truth. My disappointment and confusion with when and where the show airs is not a knock on the network in general. I've made posts stating how Nick has been extremely creator friendly to me. They never once told me I couldn't do exactly what I wanted with this show, or failed to provide me with the resources to make it happen. I brought Harvey Beaks to Nick because I feel it's the right fit for both them and me. There are lots of very creative 
creator-driven shows in the pipeline here, and they also have just as much freedom to make exactly the shows they want. Is Nick trying to figure out the best way to get those shows out there and make them successful? Yes. Do they have that process perfected? No. I think what we're seeing is growing pains as the network transitions into the digital age. Trust me, it can be hard as a creator when TV audiences are shrinking. We can all armchair quarterback what we think should be happening at these networks, but the reality is a network has a ton of moving parts that we aren't all privy to, and making changes at a giant corporation isn't easy or fast. But things are happening that will be good. I really believe that or else I wouldn't be here. So a little bit of venting isn't a sign of the apocalypse. It's us being passionate about our work and wanting as many people to see it as possible. A well-worded and thoroughly written response from Greenblatt, one that does hold true to a lot from their personal point of view as well as how the network itself operates. The only problem with that, though, is that this was all forced from Nickelodeon. Regardless of what was sincerely meant within the response, Nickelodeon ultimately made Greenblatt publicly respond with this to push out some good PR and to simmer down those who are upset with the network and their decisions. Greenblatt, in response to more fans on his Tumblr, went into the story behind the apology. That defense was forced. I was taken into an office, given a stern lecture, and told I had to go on Cartoon brew and write a reply. And yeah, it's funny how the network easily forgets it took a couple of seasons for Spongebob to catch on. Now they're too big to fail and they need that instant hit. They're a junkie and they're stuck on the needle of Spongebob, but like all junkies, they'll wither and die if they don't clean up. That is a very different response, both in emotion and tone in comparison to the forced Nickelodeon apology. There was no sugarcoating it anymore. What better person to know that even Spongebob had its initial struggles during what most consider the golden years of Spongebob than a person who legit worked on the show and saw it all firsthand. Things only get messier from here. But how? I don't know! <laughs> Up next on Toons! They did cancel the show a while back, but that means we won't make any more past season two, not that they won't show them. That's 52 half hours, which is a lot, and they will all air. We're still finishing up season two, so there are plenty more for you to see. Ending isn't the sad part, a little. I'm sad they make it so hard for anyone to see the show. Now we are back to November 6th, 2016. After about halfway through season two premiering on Nickelodeon, it was fully confirmed that Harvey Beaks was canceled by the network. The remaining episodes of the show, the back half of season two, wouldn't be shown on the main Nickelodeon channel, but rather the Nicktoons channel, well known as the graveyard for shows that couldn't be a SpongeBob on the main channel. A lot, and I mean a lot of shows have found their fate sealed because of being dropped off on Nicktoons. We've covered plenty of them here on the channel. Sadly, this makes another. But what's even a little bit sadder is that everyone working on Harvey Beaks didn't find out about the Nicktoons move until a tweet popped up on Twitter. And with the whole cancellation on its own being sad, it came with a weird punishment the network hit the show with. Like yeah, canceling something is already the end all be all in the public's eye at least. But after the initial deleted rants from Greenblatt, the network in a snap made things seem to disappear. The rest of season two was originally going to premiere on the 20th of November in 2016. But now, post-announcement of Nicktoons and post-rants from Greenblatt, these episodes just never started airing. Now in February of 2017, even Greenblatt himself stated, I literally have no idea when or where if the episodes will air. Maybe it was because of those comments or just happenstance, but in March of 2017, the show premiered the final 15 episodes up until December of that same year. A lot of the Tumblr responses from Greenblatt, however, give us an even deeper look into how everything really was behind the scenes. I'm terribly disappointed in the network. I'm disappointed that I put my faith in them, I'm disappointed that I spent seven years of my life making something special for them just to throw it away. I'm disappointed in so many things about them that I can't even say it all. It's hard going into work every day feeling sad, angry, and let down. I'll do my best to make sure the show stays great though. Going on regarding pitches to Nick for shows and ideas, they have a terrible record. Be ready for them to bite your neck and cause massive blood loss. Greenblatt is certainly passionate about his 
his work, but also about the animation space in general. He would fight and stick up for the newcomers on the block, giving people their first big job opportunities and deal head on with the transparency about the ethics of the business, even at his own dismay when the network comes back at him. Nickelodeon can be split in two different ways. There is Nickelodeon the animation studio, and then there's Nickelodeon the network. They both function in different ways and are not one in the same despite the name. My time at Nick has been excellent. As a studio, they've been creatively supportive. I've worked with amazing people, they let me make the show I wanted with little compromise, I couldn't have had a better experience. A completely different tone in the sentiment expressed here from Greenblatt, but this was toward the animation studio of Nickelodeon, not the network side. While the show would still go on with its remaining episodes post everything said and expressed, Harvey Beaks would quietly come to an end on December 29th, 2017 on the Nicktoons Network. Since the end of Harvey Beak, C.H. Greenblatt went on to work on Big City Greens, Jellystone, and has more in the pipeline beyond that. His legacy holds strong in the animation space for his body of work and what he has been a part of. Chowder was a big moment on Cartoon Network, right before the CN Real era came into play, and then after that, the new animation renaissance. But that same new era wasn't as big and opportunity-driven when it came to Nickelodeon. While Harvey Beaks did get a chance to spread its wings, it unfortunately Unfortunately, was forced to fly below the treetops. It may have only lasted a little longer than two and a half years, but it was able to branch out a bit with some comic books. Volume 1, Inside Joke by Stefan Petrusha, Volume 2, It's Crazy Time by Kevin Kramer, and Volume 3, More Than Meets the Eye by Shane Houghton. Even Jeff Trammell created a comic for Harvey Beaks. He actually wrote for an episode of the show beforehand and has since went on to write for a handful of other popular shows, with his eventual main gig becoming Craig of the Creek. And now is currently working as a head writer on the upcoming Spider man freshman year show coming in 2024. Harvey Beaks also had and was in several Nickelodeon Flash games, with the main one being Pichu, where you launch up into the air and collect as many bugs on your way back down while avoiding tree branches and bees. The show was also nominated for a few awards like two Annie Awards, a Young Artist Award, and a Daytime Emmy, but it didn't win any of those categories it was nominated for. After finally seeing what this show was and being myself a fan of the laid-back style of storytelling with likable characters and beautiful animation, it's sad to see this show not fully given the chance to last even a little bit longer and find a larger audience. The fans of the show it did garner are for the most part pretty heavily opinionated in the favor of the show, and I can easily see why. It has a great and real sense of childlike optimism and wonder. Greenblatt wasn't out to create Chowder 2, or be like any other show out at the time, with the H in C.H. Greenblatt actually standing for Harvey. You can tell there was something a little extra special thrown in the mix there. There's a reason why he saw himself in that character, and maybe why he was very extra passionate about this show. It was something unique and will remain a positive look back for me when discussing this show further on. But of course, what about you? What did you think about Harvey Beaks? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this, or all of your socks will forever be damp. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll be back soon with a new video, but until then, later.